The filmmaker Shane Meadows has put on hold his gritty, intense drama series, This Is England, in order to make, of all things, a rock documentary. But then he has called the musicians in question, the Stone Roses, his favourite band of all time. The Manchester music legends reformed last year after a 15-year hiatus following a very public implosion at the very height of their fame. And Meadows was there at the reunion with his camera. The Stone Roses gained a cult following in the late 1980s and early 90s, combining the party spirit of acid house with indie rock. It was guitar music you could dance to. They embodied the Manchester music movement, and it was the moment a generation felt it had found its voice, northern, streetwise, and irreverent. Their eponymous debut album brought them huge success in 1989, and this gig at Spike Island the following year was seen as their career highlight. But after a series of legal wrangles with their management, their follow-up record took five years to make, by which time the cultural movement that they had come to represent had all but died out. Amongst their lifelong fans is the acclaimed filmmaker Shane Meadows. It's not very often one of your heroes actually to make a documentary about your all-time favourite band that are getting back together after 20 years. No surprise then that he dropped everything to make a documentary about what was one of the most highly anticipated musical resurrections of all time. Meadows was granted unprecedented access to the band for almost a year, and he followed the fans around the world, for whom the influence of the Stone Roses goes far beyond their music. With their consistent absences and unpredictability, the Stone Roses have maintained an almost mystical aura for their fans. Made of Stone provides a rare insight into a band which remains one of the most influential in British pop history. It takes time for people to fall in love with you. But it's inevitable. When I met up with Shane Meadows, I suggested that he was a very political director and that the band wasn't necessarily that political. So was it love or fanaticism that drove him to make the film? You know, as a kid, I'd made a film about This Is England, um, but I was 11 years old when I, I got into becoming a skinhead, so I'd attach myself to somebody else's fashion. I was a plastic skinhead, really. It wasn't really my... my it wasn't stomach. your soul. Yeah, it wasn't my soul, and, and the first uh, band that ever became the soundtrack to my life were the Stone Roses. I, I remember um, the first, I say, posh girl that I ever went out with from college, an artist, fine artist girl. I bought her back, played Waterfall to her. She thought I was sensitive and kissed me. So I was having all this positive affirmation to their music. But they, they disappeared almost as fast as they arrived. They had this fantastic opening yeah. in their late teens. And then they were gone. The band that we all know now that, that really broke out began in 87 when Manny joined. And like you say, there was this massive explosion and a lot of other bands from Manchester at the same time. This whole thing unfolded, the summer of love. And, but, you know, whereas all the other bands kind of carried on making records, the Roses had um, signed a deal which was, a, you know, paramount to slave labour. And once they realised that, you know, they'd, you know, basically they were in a contract that was, you know, completely untenable, they started, uh, trying to get out of it, but it ended up becoming a five-year, four or five-year wait to get out the contract and record another record. Now, in the past, you've tended to work with one or two cameras. Yeah. I gather on this one, it's, 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 there's been a transition. Um, uh, yeah, like you said, I worked with two cameras on This Is England, which was kind of a luxury for a filmmaker. I thought two was quite a lot. And then when I started looking at the 100-foot wide stage at Heaton Park, 75,000 people per night, and the fact that I wanted the fans to be an intrinsic part of this, I went from two to five to seven to nine and ended up at 35 cameras. And um, so, yeah, I sort of... Uh, I, I went from kind of, you know, working-class kitchen sink realism to um, uh, what they call it, a Titanic in six months. The, the, there is a sort of well-known fact that these are it's an extremely combustible group i mean and creativity often requires combustion but um at one point you actually had to stop filming because the combustion was getting hold of the film yeah well they had a very public uh fallout in amsterdam that was all over the internet and uh, and i think what a lot of filmmakers who maybe make documentaries all the time would have done is try to ram the cameras in the dressing rooms um, and find out you know, what was going on. But because of my love for the band, I'd, I've not held back from what everyone saw, but I didn't go backstage sticking mics in the way. I'd, I made all my crew 
turned their cameras and sound devices off and we all sat in a room a bit like you know being respectful if someone's having a bit of a fallout I, I don't think it's my place to you know I'm not making the Jeremy Kyle show um, and that that became a big turning point I think with the band because they realized that they could trust me I wasn't there trying to make you know Martin Bashir's Michael Jackson expose I was making it with genuine love and uh, an affection I've not it's warts and all don't get me wrong but at the same time um, I also understood that certain things are private. When they first came good, that they were working against the backdrop of Thatcher's Britain. Yeah, and I think, you know, I mean, some of the, uh, some of the songs, I think Elizabeth My Dear was, you know, there was messages in there of anti-royalism, and I think as a band, they were, they were very, very strongly stood for what they believed in. People don't think of Margaret Thatcher as having been the progenitor of great art, but it seems as if kicking against her traces, if you like, yeah. uh, generated some really incredible music. From my, per my own personal perspective, you know, I was brought up, I mean, mine's not a direct link, you know, to Margaret Thatcher. She never came to my school and told me I was going to be a bin man she personally. She didn't come to you, Toxter? <laughs> no, she never came. <laughs> but, I, you know, the, the, the thing I was getting at the time, the, the, the sense of growing up in the 80s that, that came to me is I don't think I'd be an artist without that early anger of wanting to be a skinhead and attaching myself to things because I saw youth clubs, boxing clubs, things for kids that were, you know, maybe the, the rougher end of the spectrum, things that were giving children a home that were being taken under that government um, ended up, certain people like myself kicked against it and you know I kind of I think it gave me the passion to be a filmmaker. Well now the band is back and Made in Stone comes out in the very aftermath of her death. Are we here again? Yeah. There's a lot of stuff which has a resonance with the 80s. Massively so yeah I mean I know um, just in terms of friends and people I've grown up with that um, I know plenty of people that have got a two job families that are struggling like they've never struggled in their lives um, and it's you know it is, yeah, massively. I think, I think it I went... is odd that, that the band disappeared in the boom times yeah. and is back again in yeah. recession. Yeah, I mean, whether that, you know, what I don't know what that responds to. I don't know whether it was ever um, an educated decision, but it's a bit like when This Is England came out. It sort of came out and it just happened to be at the time the 25th anniversary of the Falklands. Sometimes these things are in the air. You don't realise mm. you're plucking from the ether, but maybe, maybe they are. I don't know. Shane Meadows, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Made of Stone is released in cinemas on the 5th of June and tickets are on sale from tomorrow.